Thus it was that many years later, when the Jati had again convened in the Bardo, after years of work fighting off the foreigners living at the mouth of the East River, fighting to hold together their peoples in the face of all the devastating new diseases that struck them, making alliances with From West's people embattled in like fashion on the west coast of their island, doing all they could to knit together the nations and to enjoy life in the forest with their kin and their tribes, From West approached Keeper of the Wampum and said to him proudly, You have to admit it, I did what you demanded of me. I went out in the world and fought for what was right, and we did some good again. Keeper put a hand to the shoulder of his young brother as he approached the great edifice of the Bardo's dais of judgment and said, Yes, you performed well, youth. We did what we could. But already he was looking ahead at the Bardo's enormous towers and battlements, wary and unsatisfied, focused on the tasks ahead. Things in the Bardo seemed to have gotten even more Chinese since their last time there, like all the rest of the realms, perhaps, or perhaps it was just a coincidence having to do with their angle of approach, but the great wall of the dais was broken up into scores of levels, leading into hundreds of chambers, so that it looked somewhat like the side of a beehive. The bureaucrat god at the entryway to this warren, one Bian Chong by name, handed out guidebooks to the process facing them above, thick tomes all entitled The Jade Record, each hundreds of pages long, filled with detailed instructions and with descriptions, illustrated copiously, of the various punishments they could expect to suffer for the crimes and affronteries they had committed in their most recent lives. Keeper took one of these thick books and without hesitation swung it like a tomahawk, knocking Bian Chung over his paper-laden desk. Keeper looked around at the long lines of souls waiting their turn to be judged and saw them staring at him amazed, and he shouted at them, Riot! Revolt! Rebel! Revolution! And without waiting to see what they did, he led his little jotty into a chamber of mirrors, the first room on their passage, through the process of judgment, where souls were to look at themselves and see what they really were. A good idea, Keeper admitted, after stopping in the middle and staring at himself, seeing what no one else could see. I am a monster, he announced. My apologies to you all, and especially to you, Iagoge, for putting up with me this last time and all the previous times, and to you, youth, nodding at Bouchot, whom he had known as From West. But nevertheless, we have work to do. I intend to tear this whole place down. And he began looking around the room for something to throw at the mirrors. Wait, Iagoge said. She was reading her copy of The Jade Record, skimming pages rapidly, Frontal assaults are ineffective, as I recall. I'm remembering things. We have to go at the system itself. We need a technical solution. Here, here's just the thing. Just before we're sent back into the world, the goddess Mung administers to us a vial of forgetting. I don't remember that, Keeper said. That's the point. We go into each life ignorant of our pasts, and so we struggle on each time without learning anything from the times before— We have to avoid that if we can, so listen and remember. When you are in the hundred and eight rooms of this mung, don't drink anything. If they force you to, then only pretend to drink it and spit it out when you are released. She read on. We emerge in the final river, a river of blood, between this realm and the world. If we can get there with our minds intact, then we might be able to act more effectively. Fine, Keeper said, but I intend to destroy this place itself. "'Remember what happened last time you tried that?' Boucher warned him, getting into the corner of the chamber so he could see the reflection of the reflections. Some things were coming back to him as Iagoge had spoken. When you took a sword to the goddess of death, and she redoubled on you with each stroke. Keeper frowned, trying to recall. Outside there was a roaring, shouts, sounds of gunfire, boots running. Irritated, distracted, he said— You can't be cautious at times like this. You have to fight evil whenever the chance comes. True, but cleverly. Little steps. Keeper regarded him skeptically. He held his thumb and forefinger together in the air. That small? He grabbed up Iagoge's book and threw it at one wall of the mirrors. One of them cracked, and a shriek came from behind the wall. 
Quit arguing, Yagoge said. Pay attention now. Keeper picked the book back up, and they hurried through close little rooms, moving higher and higher, then lower again, then higher, always up or downstairs in multiples of seven or nine. Keeper abused several more functionaries with the big book. Pounds the rock kept slipping into side rooms and getting lost. Finally they reached the hundred and eight chambers of Mong, the goddess of forgetting. Everyone had to pass through a different one of the chambers and drink the cup of the wine that was not wine set out for them. Guards who did not look as if they would notice the slap of a book, be it ever so thick, stood at every exit to enforce this requirement. Souls were not to return to life too burdened or advantaged by their pasts. "'I refuse,' Keeper shouted. They could all hear it from the nearby rooms. "'I don't remember this ever being required before.' "'That's because we're making progress,' Bouchot tried to call to him. "'Remember the plan! Remember the plan!' He himself took up his vial, happily fairly small, and faked swallowing its sweet contents with an exaggerated gulp, tucking the liquid under his tongue. It tasted so good he was sorely tempted to swallow it down, but resisted and only let a little seep to the back of his tongue. Thus, when his guard tossed him out into the final river with the rest, he spat out what he could of the not-wine. But he was disoriented, nevertheless. The other members of the jati thrashed likewise in the shallows, choking and spitting. Straight arrow giggling drunkenly, totally oblivious, Iagoge rounded them up, and Keeper, no matter what he had forgotten, had not lost his main purpose, which was to wreak havoc however he could— they half swam, half floated across the red stream to the far shore. There, at the foot of a tall red wall, they were hauled out of the river by two demon gods of the bardo, life is short, and death by gradations. Overhead a banner hanging down the side of the wall displayed the message, To be a human is easy. To live a human life is hard. To desire to be human a second time is even harder. If you want release from the wheel, persevere. Keeper read the message and snorted. A second time. What about the tenth? What about the fiftieth? And with a roar, he shoved death by gradations into the river of blood. They had spat enough of Mung's not wine of forgetting in the stream that the god guard quickly forgot who had shoved him and what his job was and how to swim. But the others of the jati saw what Keeper had done, and their purpose came back ever more clearly to their consciousness— Bouchot shoved the other guard into the stream. Justice, he shouted after the suddenly absent-minded swimmer. Life is short indeed. Other guards appeared upstream on the bank of the final river, hurrying toward them. The members of the jati acted quickly, and for once, like a team, by twisting and tangling the banner hanging down the wall, they made it into a kind of rope they could use to pull themselves up the red wall. Bouchot and Keeper and Iagoge and Pounds the Rock and Straight Arrow and Zigzag and all the rest hauled themselves up to the top of the wall, which was broad enough to sprawl onto. There they could catch their breath and have a look around— back down into the dark and smoky bardo, where a struggle even more chaotic than usual had broken out. It looked like they had started a general revolt, and then forward, down onto the world, swathed in clouds. It looks like that time when they took Butterfly up that mountain to sacrifice her, Keeper said. I remember that now. Down there we can make something new, Iagoge said. It's up to us. Remember! And they dove off the wall like drops of rain.